Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making delicious crepe Suzette. So let's get started. First off, we're measuring out one cup of flour into a small bowl. And let me tell you, you do not need any special equipment to make these. They sound very fancy, but they're actually really easy. 120 grams, exactly. Okay, I'm making this in my blender today, but if you want, you can use a bowl and a whisk. It's just a little bit more work. I also melted three tablespoons of butter to have that at the ready. Now into a blender, I am adding three quarters of a cup of whole milk, half a cup of water, two large room temperature eggs, and by the way, crepes are another amazing thing that you can make ahead. So you can have this batter overnight in the fridge just hanging out and then make your crepes in the morning. So it's like zero effort. You also want one tablespoon of sugar. This gives you a little bit of sweetness, but it also softens the dough so that it'll have like this melt in your mouth consistency. You also want an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, which is just a little pinch. There you go. Crepe Suzette is an orange crepe. So we're gonna have a little bit of orange flavor in the crepe and that's coming from orange zest using my microplane or rasp just to get like half a teaspoon or so of zest. Now we're gonna blend this up for about 15 seconds just so everything is nice and combined before the flour goes in. And if you wanted to, this could be done with a whisk. I almost forgot that melted butter. What am I thinking? So that would have been an accident and Crepe Suzette was actually invented by accident. There was a dish being served to the Prince of Wales. It was in a chafing dish, which has a little flame to keep things warm. The crepes caught on fire from the chafing flame and the guy's like, oh my gosh, everything must be ruined, but there was no time to fix it. So he served the dish that had been flambéed because there's brandy in the sauce and it tasted delicious. So Crepe Suzette was born. I added one cup of flour and I'm gonna blend it up. I blended on medium speed just until everything was combined. No need to slosh this around. We're gonna let this set for 15 minutes while we make the sauce. It'll give the gluten some time to relax and everything will just spread out really evenly and have a wonderful tender texture. You want a big pan? And everything just goes right in there, starting with the zest, so two teaspoons of orange zest. Depending on how you measure that, it's like the zest of one and a half oranges. So we zested half for the crepes, one and a half for the sauce. And you can do this two ways. So traditionally, a crepe Suzette, if you go to a fancy French restaurant, will be flambéed at the table and they'll like light everything on fire and serve it there. But when you're making things at home, unless it's for a dinner party and you're really trying to get that moment, it's just easier to do it the way we're gonna do today, where we serve everything warm and delicious, but we're not gonna catch things on fire. I will tell you, how to do that and maybe we'll try it out too, we'll see. Now we need some fresh orange juice and I love oranges. We grew up with orange trees at my house and my mom who's from Mexico actually like fell in love with French cuisine. So, so one of the things she would always like to try out are different French dishes and she loved making crepe Suzette for dinner parties. Fresh orange juice is totally different from what you get out of a bottle from the store, unless it says freshly squeezed orange juice. If it says made with freshly squeezed oranges, that means that like a year ago, they juiced the oranges, they went into some crazy giant silo and then they added orange flavorings to it a year later when they took it out of the silo. That's why it tastes different than fresh orange juice. If you were curious, that's gonna be about two oranges, but maybe three if yours are a little smaller dry. Three quarters of a cup of orange freshly juiced into my pan. I'm adding half a cup of unsalted butter, cutting it into little pieces, and this is gonna give us a wonderful richness and great mouth feel for the sauce. It'll also help soften the acidity of the oranges. The sweetness is gonna get amped up with half a cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar. My butter is all melted. This is gonna come to a boil over medium high heat and then we're gonna reduce to a simmer and this is gonna simmer down. However, you're gonna add the final ingredient in this and that's a really nice orange liqueur. You could use a triple sec if you want, but find a nice triple sec for it because it doesn't have a ton of flavor. A nicer one like a Cointreau or a Grimarnier is gonna be brandy based and give you just more depth of flavor. And if you're worried about the alcohol, it all burns off while this cooks. So if you're gonna flambe this, you wanna add the alcohol at the very end. It'll be really hot. So hot sauce, alcohol goes in, light it on fire, and you can pour it on top of your crepes. It's a wonderful presentation. But if you're not doing that, you can add about a third of a cup of your alcohol in and it'll give you that wonderful depth of flavor and as it simmers down, all the alcohol will cook off. And the nice thing is that as soon as the sauce is done, your crepes are gonna be ready to make. 
My sauce is almost thickened, but because I've been filming and it takes a while to move cameras around, this has rested for 15 minutes, so I'm gonna put this on the stove behind me while we make our crepes. My sauce is bubbling way behind me, and just really quickly, today I'm using a crepe pan. I got one for Christmas and I love it, but you can make this in a regular nonstick large pan and it works just fine. The benefit of this is it's really flat, so it's easy to take the crepes out. Pop that over medium heat and you have to mind the heat because as you continue cooking crepes, this pan will get hotter and hotter, so you'll have to adjust the heat down. You're going to brush butter on here, and butter is your friend for a multiple number of reasons. It prevents sticking, it makes the crepes delicious, it also gives you that like tender, wonderful crepe. If your heat's too low, you'll dry the crepe out and it'll be kind of tough, and if it's too high, your crepe will burn. I'm also transferring my batter into a bowl. That seems nice and hot. Your first crepe is usually a little not pretty. I happen to have my crepe swirly tool. I don't know what it's called. You don't need it. It's kind of more trouble than it's worth. Now we're gonna add a quarter cup of the batter in and you can add it in like I'm doing just to give you kind of an even layer. Use your wet tool if you have it just to spread the batter out a bit because you want a thin layer. And you're gonna see your crepe cooks really fast. Put that back in to soak and this got a little too hot so we'll see. You'll know your crepe is done when the top changes texture because it'll look um, a little bit more matte and lose that glossy consistency. Okay, there we go. All right, that first one is like a sacrificial crepe. It's not the prettiest ever, but it's gonna taste delicious and you can always put it at the bottom of the stack. People freak out about crepes not being perfect and whatever else, but what they don't realize is you're either rolling them or folding them so no one can tell. <laughs> except for you. So that got a little bit more color than I wanted, but it's okay, and I did tear it. More butter now. One quarter cup of batter. We're gonna spread this out a bit. This is not how you're supposed to use a tool. You're supposed to do one graceful motion like this. I took that off heat. It's looking nice and syrupy. This changed texture. This is better. It doesn't look good, but this is better. So I have two sacrificial crepes. The rest are gonna be fine. Your pan can't get too hot because then your butter will start browning and crepes shouldn't have that like dark color. They should be nice and light and delicate. Gonna add a quarter cup of batter in, use my crepe tool and just get a nice even layer. And you flip it over, just like that. If you don't have one of these, you could use an offset spatula to pick it up. This is nice though, because it won't scratch your pan. It's like a little wooden sword. So now fold that up. That looks great. You wanna see those little dots and place it on a tray for later. You're gonna repeat this process, making sure to butter in between each crepe and also reduce temperature if your pan is getting really hot. And sometimes you'll just have to take the pan off of heat so it can cool down a bit. My last crepe is done. I'm gonna get the sauce back over here and we're gonna assemble this deliciousness. If you're flambéing this, remember you would have added the alcohol at the very end when it's still hot, immediately light it on fire and pour. Today, I'm feeling like just having it the easy way. So we're gonna add our crepes back into the pan and this is on the lowest of heats just to keep things warm. And you can serve it up directly from the pan or place this back into a serving tray. And full disclosure, I did not have the best crepe day. I don't know what was wrong, but the stars were not aligned. Normally it's so much easier for me, but even still, they look totally beautiful because we fold them into quarters or we roll them up into rolls. Any mistakes you have are really gonna be just private mistakes that no one can see. It doesn't taste delicious anyways. Spooning some sauce over the top, and just like that, our crepes are done and ready to serve. That is buttery, bursting with orange flavor and just melts on your tongue. It is so delicious. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my French playlist.